Hi guys, welcome back to another very exciting Adobe Live. I am your host, Jesus Ramirez, and today I have with me the amazing Claudie from Sprint My Soul. Hello everyone, so nice to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us today. We're going to be working with editorial design. We're going to work with Adobe InDesign. Tell us yes. a little bit more about that, Claudia. Correct. So today we're going to be working in InDesign, and I've actually run a little um, Instagram poll to see what kind of editorial design you guys were interested in uh, because of course when we talk about editorial design we talk about books we talk about magazines we talk about anything that is usually laid out for a printing page yeah. so layout and the way that we organize text and images into a page in order to uh, help the reader to <laughs> understand and read the content awesome that sounds amazing now before we get into that there's a few housekeeping items that we need to take care of mm -hmm. first paul just finished the let me get Hi, to paul. my screen oh yeah hey paul. and also i can see voodooval and i can oh. see alberto what's up <laughs> and carol awesome so um let me just take care of, of these quick things so we yes. had the daily creative uh challenge the illustrator da daily creative challenge it just ended just a moment ago we saw paul create this cool time travel 3d thing um we're gonna be reviewing that in about an hour and a half cool. on discord so make sure that you submit the work that you created with paul make sure that you click on the community chat and that you go into uh discord and make sure that under challenge you submit the work that you created so that claudia and i can review it with you give it give you our thoughts and um suggestions on on the work that uh they create also we uh let's look at the schedule and here's the schedule. Today we started with Paul Trani. I think Paul's on twice today. Uh, Paul started with getting started in, uh, with Adobe Spark. Then we had Voodoo Val for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Uh, we had my friend Christy Odom doing um, presets. She, uh, she was on with Paco just a moment ago. And then just right before us, we had Paul Trani doing the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. And that's what we're going to review yes. in about an hour and a half. So submit, submit, submit your work. <laughs> yep. And then we now have Claudie doing editorial design, which uh, I'm not being biased or anything, but I think is the best stream of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and then my good friend Howard Pinsky will be on just right after us doing the XD Daily Creative Challenge. And right after Howard, we have Cal T. Webster. Uh, well, actually, no, we have, uh, oh yeah, we have Cal Webster doing a, a draw along and then a design off with Voodoo Val and Cody there. So it's amazing. A, what a busy day. <laughs> it's a fun filled day. So I hope that you guys are watching all the streams because I know you guys are not going anywhere right now. <laughs> Stay at home. Stay at and home. Watch the streams. And watch all the streams. <laughs> and do the work because it looks like there are like three creative challenges going on. Yeah, there's a whole Photoshop, bunch of Photoshop, Illustrator, them. Illustrator, and XD. Yeah, so, so make sure got... that you check everybody out. Yeah. Um, so I think we're ready to get started if um, by the way I haven't asked I usually ask I'm, I'm kind of curious to see where people are uh, watching us from currently mm -hmm. we're in Manchester UK we're in England uh, this is where we're streaming uh, today for you guys so let us know in the chat where you guys are streaming from I'd love to know Yes, where, people are where, where, where you guys are from where you are doing your home staying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where, where is your home and um, also um, maybe I just want to say something about me for those. Yeah, yeah. Let me. us. Yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about you, who you are. For those of you that don't know you, I think everyone in the chat knows who you are. But <laughs> <laughs> I can see some in familiar they... faces, but I also see new <laughs> faces here. Um, we just want to say a quick hello to see John. I recognize John. Um, Lucia from Italy. Oh. Actually, let's say Lucia. I cannot <laughs> pronounce it <laughs> in English. Too bad. By the Nor way, we... Uh, sorry for interrupting, no, but we have Oakland in the house. Sam in Oakland represent representing the Bay 510. That's where I'm from, where I grew up. <laughs> Not in yeah. Oakland, next door, Alameda. That's where I'm from. <laughs> Amazing. So we got Italy and we got um, the US. New Saudi Zealand, Arabia, Michigan, Saudi Arabia. Madrid, awesome. Spain. We were recently in Barcelona we and in Barcelona Valencia. Recently. So big love to Spain. And um, I'm just going to go and start from my general presentation for those of you who have not seen me yet and don't know me yet but for those of you that know me i've added a little bit more pictures so it's not the same thing so even if it's over and over, know, over and over again <laughs> um but i'm gonna try to be quick so we can actually jump into uh, our work soon and i have a ton a ton of gifts for you guys so stay tuned because very soon i'm gonna guide you through um and the, the links in order to download the starter file some assets some 
free templates. I've worked hard since I'm staying at home and I have some extra time in order for you to have so many uh, little gifts here during our stream and in order to be able to participate with me during the stream and perhaps works. We're going to be here for a couple hours, so there is plenty of time Just to your time. take um, the files and pick it up and work if you want. If you don't want, you can stop it there and then uh, go back in your own time and finish the work. That's right. And don't forget to submit that daily creative challenge because we do want to have a bunch yes. of submissions to review, so make sure you submit it. We'll go over those in about an hour and a half. And as I always say, um, this is a safe space. I love the Adobe live stream and the Adobe live community because it's a safe space for learning. You guys make me smarter, like I heard Paul Trani say. I think it's absolutely true. I learn a ton by looking at each other at work, and that's why I encourage you to submit. I get inspired if you perhaps, even if you're not finished, you know, even if it's unfinished, maybe our feedback, Asus feedback, can help you to find a direction for your work. But awesome. So let's tell us more about yourself. More about me. So uh, my, fir my, my main uh, uh, social platform is Print My Soul, which is the name of my business. You can find it down here. As you can see, I'm on Behance, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And uh, also, the other side of my business is IamClady.com. And as you can see, there are two different uh, businesses because Print My Soul takes, takes care of my client, while with I Am Clady is more tutorial, lives, free resources. So all my speaking and mentoring content goes into under IamClady.com. Nice. So if that's what we are after, that's what you have to head to, IamClady.com. Well, if you want to work with me, um, as a as a as a customer, or you want to work together with me uh, for other uh, businesses, Print My Soul is the correct. So, platform. if I want to hire you to design a logo for me or a design for me, that will be Print My Soul. Print My Soul. And yes. if I want to learn from you, that's I am Claudia. I am Claudia. Yes. Got it. Makes Perfect. sense. Very, very, very well done. So, I <laughs> like to share these photos because I think it says a lot about me. I like to keep my hands dirty in, <laughs> with color since I was very young. I had the luck to grow up in a beautiful south of Italy and I send a lot of love to every one of you there in the chat, but especially to my Italian friends that I've not seen for a long time and unfortunately I can, can go and travel. Uh, to see them so I know my parents are watching us <laughs> from Italy uh, I know that it's quite Did, late for there after didn't your mom get banned from the <laughs> yes. chat <'Cause> my mom <laughs> kept typing in Italian so she was like mom only English I, and for everyone only English I cannot believe the moderators took out your mom from the chat I need, I need, I need to have a word with Voodoo Val and with Tim. <laughs> Just joking but yes yeah, I see I'm from um, I'm from the south Ooh. of Italy this Jan has got a really good question Let's Jan see. is asking, Claudie, do you print your soul in RGB or CMYK? <laughs> that's a very good question. That's an excellent and, question. Uh, that the word printing using, you know, as we use it every day in print, it will be CMYK because that's the color mode that we use for printing. Although the majority of the time and the way that I use the word printing in my branding is to mark. Mm. And the majority of it is done nowadays. So in that case, if I share it on screen, it will be an RG RGB. If I print it on paper, it will be CMYK. Mm. <laughs> and we're going to look at that in a second. Nice. Um, so I'm just going to move forward real quick. And you, you guys have probably already heard me saying where too many times I used to be a sporty spice. I've done skating. I was a professional sailor for the Italian Federation team. And I'm very competitive competitive and I love color so I was doing sports I grew up doing sports and painting and doing graffiti in the start of Italy and I studied public relation and communication in Milan actually for uh, four years uh, where I've done my my degree which has got nothing to do with design <laughs> is always in the marketing industry and that's why I ended up doing my first work experience at the UN in New York but at night I was still a graffiti artist at core so <laughs> I needed to find a way to merge my two nice. identity I always said I had no choice to find and invent reinvent myself because I would get end up fired or arrested <laughs> neither of the two a uh, prospective were good for me right. therefore I decided to choose to merge them and that's and why what was your graffiti artist name so you can probably see it a little bit here on the screen. Uh, my graffiti street name was Juicy. Um, and therefore, if you see, if, and I've always al also done gardens. I'm a big fan of plant and garden, as you probably already know. Uh, and as you can see here, there is a Juicy in a, in a Mexican garden, Circus car garden, and then we got flower. I think I, did, I painted this for my birthday. And it's kind of like a self-portrait with a bubble hair, with the curly hair and the flowers in the hair. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's where I kept going and fuel my passion, and that's why I always suggest to everyone take these challenges, join these Adobe Lives, do the work, follow your passion, even if it's not your full-time job right now, even if you're a student and learning, you never know where it's gonna take you. As you can see, my graffiti art took me to start develop um, a typeface. I am also dyslexic, so I try to play with shapes in order to create something that followed the Gestalt psychology, so the theory of perception. And therefore, I developed this typeface, which is um, made up by blocks. But as, as you can see, everything came from the wall, the graffiti. This nice. is my desk at work. Um, PrintMySoul.com, as I say, it is where you can find me if you want to collaborate with me or if you want to hire the studio to produce graphic. And that's the kind of word that we're going to be focusing on today. Um, I've actually run the little poll into um, Instagram yeah. asking if you guys wanted to do a book, something a little bit more creative, magazine, but everyone was like menu, menu, menu. And I understand that because even if it may sound a little bit less arty, mm -hmm. but that's commercial work. I mean, if you want to get money by doing being a graphic designer, that's the kind of work that you need to be doing and need to be learning how to do it fast. So hopefully I'll share some skill and techniques that will help you with your workflow with InDesign and Illustrator today, and we're gonna work into Photoshop tomorrow. Nice, so you guys are gonna get it all. Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign? Yes, correct. And is that it? A little bit of capture as well. Oh, maybe even capture, all we'll right. We'll see, we'll see. Let's we'll see if we can bring it on today even. Uh, Kimmy wrote, all that dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. I always and often misspell. Uh, Grammarly is a big friend of mine because I have to all the time check oh, yeah. my English because I misspell and swap letters. And apologize if you ever find all my social media posts with misspelling. You know that I wrote it personally. <laughs> this is not a paid advertisement, no. but <laughs> Grammarly is really good. <laughs> yes, it helps me a lot. And as you can see, this is the sort of work that I do with my studio nice. while we're talking. I'm just kind of scrolling mm -hmm. into the work. And this is probably the biggest piece of editorial that I've done, which is my book. Again, self-initiated project that brought me a ton of luck. I won an award. Um, the book is currently displayed in Berlin in a museum. The award was uh, Fedrugoni. Uh, I don't know if I had another slide here, probably. Uh, I'll, I'll, I can show you mm -hmm. if you go on my, we're gonna go into my, in my website in a second and you can see that there are more information there. But my mom actually uh, reminded me that when I was, I don't know, seven years old, I was doing the, fifth year elementary school in Italy, I actually designed the cover of our class poetry book. Oh, so, <laughs> is that you? That's me, <laughs> the designer in the making uh, with my coloring pen. <laughs> so, you know, do not underestimate what a person... Were you uh, juicy at that time? Yet, no, 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 you no, were no not that, that was just like, you know, you can see the seaside south okay. of Italy with the sea. How old were you when you started doing graffiti? Oh, good question. I can't even remember. I just started to hang out with my friend that were doing graffiti. Ah, uh, bad probably, influences. Probably 14, 15, 14, 15, you know, the first the first time that you start to get out of the house by yourself. Okay. A little bit longer, I started to get in trouble. I was about, I was about 23 when I left the house by myself the first oh, time. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. I actually by moved the way, to America I, at that time. Oh, yeah. oh you, when you were? In high school. In high, high school, school, that's right. Yeah. By the way, are there any graffiti artists in the chat? I'd love to know oh, if there's yeah. any, any any people painting some walls. What is the term? Like wall strain painting? Writer. Writer. Wall writer. Writer, yeah. A writer? Are, are there any writers in the house? And I'm not even going to get started because I do not define myself as a graffiti artist. There is a big, um, you know, question and commotion between street art and graffiti mm -hmm. and commercial. And of course, Bansky, Bansky has revolutionized the word. But let's not, you know, yeah. don't don't take also, me there because I can spend two hours talking about <laughs> murales and wall art. If there if there are graffiti artists, I'd like to know your tag name or your graffiti artist yeah. name. And and share some work, you know, in, in Discord there is the this little other channel, so maybe you can share it. Give us a shout. Remember to tag me so I'll yeah. be able to see it. But I just wanted to bring these light on because you are my first male host what yes as you can see i've oh, collected amazing talented Kathleen, beautiful Christine, ladies um jazz and ari, ari. Yeah, yes nice so, talented amazing beautiful ladies and oh, also wow. me and now is the first time that i allow a male <laughs> <laughs> just because it's a you it's only because it's me <laughs> only because actually the one fact, uh, kathleen martin was my first host as well oh really yeah i think that we were max uh, Ari was the first, and then I've done the creative challenge by myself, yeah. and then I think I think mine goes like that. And Kat, me and Kathleen were having fun at Max. 
Nice. Uh, but here it is. That's that's the miss the last slide about the um, the book and the Fedrigoni Award, which was in March last year. I can believe it's one year. But as I said, menu design today. I haven't chosen. If you don't like menu design, next time go mm -hmm. on to my Instagram. I am Clady and vote because whoever voted, there were about 125 people that voted for menu design. Um, towards the end of the vote, it started to go a little bit lower, but it, it was quite strong. I think mm -hmm. it was like solid 79, 80 percent for the majority of the time. Wow! But then the poll finished at 66 percent, which was still quite relevant. I think people high. are just hungry and they want to go to a restaurant. <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about food. So <laughs> I'm sure that if you're in the UK, you probably just had your supper right now, your dinner. And if you're in Italy, you're probably just digesting and hopefully don't fall asleep. Well, Jen, so we have uh, Jen Long uh, goes by Aqua for a couple of murals that they painted. Oh, wow. Yeah. Please share into Discord, share some work. I know that usually when you do graffiti, you don't have great photos. I don't know if it was yeah. just me. So Alberto voted, but I'm guessing he voted Sorry, for... Sorry, he voted for book design. Book design, I okay. Maybe you have to create more accounts and tell your pals to vote. Yeah, you gotta tell your, your people to vote. <laughs> but um, as I say... Your writers, jump... you gotta tell your writers to vote. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your, your posse of writers to vote. <laughs> Let's go into my website. Let's right. jump there. I think Voodoo Val perhaps as the link um, to be able to share Which website? the resources. Yeah. Yes, I've cool. actually put into my um, page here, iamclady.com slash resources. You'll be able mm -hmm. to um, download the special asset for today, Adobe live stream. Nice. Um, as you can see, you can click on this asset folder. We're going to be working uh, on a... Um, vegan plant Ooh. plant eatery um plant 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 vegan eatery mm -hmm. uh restaurant which is a, a vegan eatery nice. restaurant uh any and, vegans and, in the house let us yeah know. let us know i am uh, the opposite of <laughs> vegan <laughs> Yeah, Asus, Asus is not vegan. I barely no. eat vegetables. That, you should eat your veggies. I should listen to my own advice. Yes, sometimes I put him in a smoothie to make sure that he can eat it there. But I'm going back here into resources to see here if we can download the folder. Hopefully is there. Perfect. So as you can see, I have one of the um, fonts that we're going to be using. Then I have the text of the menu that we're going to be importing. So you can use, uh, you don't need to use placeholder text. I actually gave you the text. And we have the branding assets. So the logo, the illustration, mm -hmm. and also the brand manual. And I will nice. start by looking at the brand manual here. Uh, as you can see. So what is a brand manual? Yeah, so a brand manual, very good question. So a brand manual is the point of reference of uh, business branding is a document printed or digital where you can find all the key information the core information mm -hmm. about the brand assets which are usually typography mm -hmm. the brand the version of the logo the size of the logo lo uh, logo um, lockups with different images if there are an illustration and the color palette nice if your client doesn't have a brand guideline you can suggest to create one for them I found myself uh, getting called for again a menu or a website and then I ended up doing a full project and even rebranding the business because I explained to my client and remember it's your job to teach your client the importance <laughs> of consistency for branding uh, because then when you pass the work around to some designer that's gonna be the foundation this, I call it usually brand platform okay and in fact, as you can see... So you always make one of those for your clients? I always make one of those. I make sure that they have it. Um, I like to keep my clients independent. They usually come back because they mm -hmm. enjoy working with me. Um, I have shared some um, other file that hopefully Voodoo has. If not, we can grab them in a second. But one is the font that we're going to be using. So one font is going to be here in the folder. The other one is... Let's go back. It's called Bryant. And the other one, you can get it from um, Adobe's font. You can get there by clicking fonts.adobe.com. And it's slash called Blending. Slash font slash Blending. blending. Yeah. yeah, let me just zoom it in so you guys can see it there. Uh, so it's fonts.adobe.com slash fonts slash Benny. <laughs> Blenny. Oh, my gosh. Blenny, not Benny. And here it is. This is definitely 
a nice uh, slab uh, font that we can use um, as a display font usually for logo or big headings uh, while the other font is going to be Bryant. Sometimes I'm going to integrate other fonts. You are free to use your fonts if you're working on a client project and you want to do your own menu, feel free to do so. I just give you all these assets so we can work together and you can replicate exactly what I do. But otherwise, feel free to use. Actually, I encourage you to use and to show me something different because I get very excited. I think people are excited about food now. We were talking about a vegan restaurant, but I see that there's talk in the chat about bacon, fish and eggs. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, we're not vegan, so yeah. I'm, I'm sorry for all the vegan friends. We respect you, we love you. I love vegan food, but I'm too Italian. <laughs> to drop the cheese and the meat. Here we go. Also, I wanted to show you something because once we're gonna dive in now into the uh, brand manual, you can see that I've also incorporated a lot of jungle um, imagery because it was quite fun and you didn't want to, you wanted to stay away. The client really wanted to stay away from the standard photography. Um, that's why usually clients come to me because I, I use a lot of bold graphics, a lot of um, block colors and a lot of illustration. Now, some of these elements I've created bespoke. Some of them are from the stock image and also that file uh, should be um, they're available for you. Hopefully, um, maybe Valsarate. If not, we can share it on perhaps Discord. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, just head to stock.adobe.com and just uh, type tropical vector. As you can see, you can well, find it. Here's, um, here's a, a super cool trick for Adobe Stock. If you yeah. click on that file number, yeah. that, just click on that, and then you just delete. Oh, this is going to be weird. So delete everything before the, the two. Okay, everything. Yeah, up to where it says, I mean, you don't really need the UK part either, I think. Let's try this. Yeah, delete that and then delete that part up to the question mark. Delete the question mark as well, sorry. And then you have two slashes. I think that'll get you to the to the image right Let's away. Let's try. Yep. We're always learning. We're always learning. <laughs> so here. you can just type in that number in the, or, I mean, you can, I guess you could also type the number in the search, but. Let's zoom it in so people can yeah. actually. Oops. So if you want so that asset, you need to type 289-342-733 on the search on Adobe Stock. Yeah, perfect. And, and I'm sure somebody can paste the, I mean, I, I guess I could have. You could have pasted I could have, but you I, could Now I need it. to find <laughs> the, 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 the I'll, I'll do it really quickly here. Yes. But go ahead, continue. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for, but yeah, as you can see, we, we learn uh, always something. So um, that's the number of the assets. I went and uh, edited because I like to create something bespoke. So I really love the shape of the Jaguar. I think that it was very simple, although I really wanted to integrate a pattern that was proprietary so bespoke and made tailor made for my client and that's why uh, if you see here let's go back into our manual um, even if the shape of the jaguar is the same i've redone the eyes i've done the mouth again and the, and the actual pattern is completely different and i also use the past pattern consistently into our plant as well um, so i'm trying to open this let's see if we can um, Oh, so actually even on my laptop since I made it. <laughs> um, let's see, here is how the final brand um, book looks, but it should be going day one. Here it is, the brand manual. Ah, there Perfectly. it is. Perfect, there. So as you can see here, we have one element of the logo and the logo itself, and then we start to introduce the core values. And this is to really understand and start to soak in uh, what we're going to design because when clients tell me what you're going to design is not something that comes just on my mind without research without understanding of the brand and that's why I am working on this document first so you show this to the client I either make it for the client or uh -huh. the client should have one okay that's where I start even if it's a sample menu no matter what you do just do it right and the way to work and to have a professional output when you work with this amazing app is to do your research right and to do your basics right so you can create a great design but remember it needs to be fit for purpose so in this case we're going to create something that looks ethical vegan fun healthy organic so yes to hearty colors but also bright colors and we can use these fun images so that's something that we can keep in mind mm -hmm. those are the different logo version of the logo as we can see that I'm just going to zoom that in. We can see that uh, the client uh, doesn't mind 
uh, having this logo in lockups as you can see here we can complement it that means that we can play with the images for our menu as well those are the main color palette also i shared this with you guys because i really want you to um see what you can what you can produce for your clients this is also a piece done in indesign maybe tomorrow we can have a look if you're interested let me know maybe drop your message on behance or, or let us know now in the chat or now in the chat if yeah. you want to do because tomorrow we can still do a little bit of indesign and learn how to create a document like that and uh, uh this is just a PDF. Those are the typefaces that we talked about in a second that we're going to use for our menu just to keep that consistency. And this is the type hierarchy, more pictograms, so the icons and the imagery than not necessarily photography, if that's what your clients want. And in this case, look like that we don't have any photograph, but we have pictograph, which are illustrations. Nice. Um, and that's it for, for this one. Time to get started into our InDesign. No, let me stop you there before you get into InDesign. I just want to remind you guys that we are going to be reviewing the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge in about an hour and five minutes. So make sure that you go onto Discord and submit your work. Also, I'm noticing there's a lot of talk going on in the YouTube chat. So if you want Claudia and me to be able to respond to your comments and see your comments, uh, make sure that you go into behance.net slash live, log in with your Adobe ID, and leave your comments there. Because if you're leaving them on YouTube, we can't really see them. So make sure yeah, that you come them. into Behance. So we can reply to you. <laughs> so we can reply to you and say hi. So the first thing that I probably download all this file, I hope I hope that by now you all have done it. We're going to be starting by the Illustrator files, so this plant branding assets, as you can see in a second. But before we move into the app, I want to share with you one last super amazing um, tip, which is if you head into my website, iamclady.com slash resources, and you uh, share with me your email address, even if I'm here working with you, you're going to receive straight away some free gift. Ooh. And when I say see free gift, I'm talking about uh, free templates, templates free InDesign templates wow. we're gonna create them today so if you're planning to you know do all the work you can work with me and do it but otherwise if you want it easy just drop your email and the moment in which you join uh, the mailing list you will have access to all these different templates and by the way this is a little bit also a preview of the work that we're gonna be creating today so those are the menu business card so Savannah asked, how do you get the file? I'm not sure if she's talking about the files that you were uh, going to work with. So, so why don't, we, the best why don't bet, you show her The both. best bet is to go into iamclaudia.com slash resources. Correct. Voodoo Val just shared the, um, the file there. Thank you, Voodoo Val. And you can get the assets here mm -hmm. or simply put your email address and click on to send me Claudia resources over here. Nice. And Clary doesn't spam. And Clary doesn't spam, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I occasionally, maybe once a month, every two months, every three months, whenever I can, send you some free uh, mock-up or some free print templates. But that's about it. But if you do it right now while we stream um, and you click on send me resources, you are going to receive in about like 30 seconds to a minute all the template that I was sharing you here. Nice. And these are the free gifts. Those are the free gifts. Yeah. Nice. And also here, when you click download, you still have access to all this file that we were talking about. Okay. So there is a ton of free stuff. So the files <laughs> and Dropbox is what you're going to use today? Yes. Okay. The templates is what we're going to create, but also you can have for free. But let's get started by um, opening our file. So I'm just going to go into my desktop i'm not very organized with my desktop today let's let's hide it <laughs> Let, let's pretend that it's all organized well, we can go. switch screens <laughs> <laughs> no that's fine here see now they can't see her <laughs> that's fine no, so see, now now you guys can look at us and you don't see all the mess that she has in her like that's why i'm not showing my computer because my computer has just a mess you keep hiding in there just just yeah. keep a, a, a browser open <laughs> but i hope that you downloaded the uh, file by now I'm gonna starting by opening Illustrator before we jump into InDesign because we're gonna have a look at the uh, branding assets and how to use the CCC the CCC <laughs> the CC library um, in order to um, oops I'm just gonna rate it later in order to create assets that we're gonna be using in InDesign in fact that's the amazing power of CC library no matter if you're working into 
InDesign or Illustrator or Photoshop, you'll be able to share and use content and assets always by staying within the <laughs> library environment. Uh, <laughs> Jen, Jen, wrote, Jen wrote, Cloudy equals Mac, lots of stickers. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and then she wrote, uh, Jesus equals Windows, no <laughs> stickers. Is this going to be like the, uh, I mean, I, you're probably not going to get this reference, but there used to be a, a Mac versus PC commercial in America. And like mm -hmm. the Windows guy was like this older dude with glasses and a suit. And, and I'm then, the cool and, young and person. The cool young person. I yeah. can get that. That's basically <laughs> what, <laughs> what Jen is referring to. But also, I'm a little bit of, um, how do you say, hypocrites here? <laughs> well, you're, you're faking it because you, faking it's it. not, the, the, see, the, the thing I'm is the stickers are not really on the laptop. <laughs> I actually have a cover, yeah. so I depending on my see that's that's my duality. Depending if I have to show up at the United States and United Nation or doing a graffiti mm -hmm. piece, it's not gonna happen right now. Yeah. I don't want to break my laptop. I'm probably gonna show you maybe at the end, but this cover. Yeah, you, moves can, away. you can peel it off basically. And can peel it off. I'm not gonna. Yeah, don't do it now. <laughs> <laughs> probably I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm gonna show you my sticker, or maybe at the end, at the end of the stream. I'm gonna let it be now because I like. Do you guys <laughs> all have stickers on your laptops? Am I the only one that doesn't put it? Am I the I only just, one who fakes it? <laughs> I just, I just like things to be clean and, and smooth. That's like it. I don't need to put stickers. And then also like. I feel that whatever sticker besides my own logo, <laughs> I'm not gonna like it eventually. I actually don't even like hey, my logo. Hey, we need now. to create some stickers with your logo, Sus. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna do that. I yeah. tried enough, not happening right now. Let's focus into our um, uh -oh. illustrator. Your, your mom is in the chat. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, so um, moderators. <laughs> she's writing in English she's, right now. Oh, she's okay. She <laughs> might get kicked out again. <laughs> no, she's doing good. <laughs> Hi, mom. Say hi. Be nice. Oh. Hola, tesoro. <laughs> okay, so let's get some work done. So as you can see, we have a ton of illustration here and the logo. And I actually wanted to share something. When I was doing this logo, I was also thinking, you know, when I eat vegetable, I might be because I'm a designer, might be because I'm a little bit obsessed with what I do with shape and colors, but mm -hmm. I have certain plates for certain food that I cook. I don't know if you guys are the same, but there is like, when I do my vegetable recipe or vegan recipe, I have a special plate that I love to use. And I actually pretty much took the pattern from my favorite plate. Mm -hmm. Here it is. That's nice. my bowl. That's when I do my salad or when I do um, my little recipe. I like to, I love to take photo in, uh, in this piece. And as you can see, the pattern that I've created resemble uh, this, this piece over here. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and share with you the actual palette. You have exactly the same um, composition here, maybe a little bit different size, but you have the same layer. If you see, I'm gonna put this. All right, so so people are, are, are commenting about uh, team stickers, teams, uh, team no stickers. Uh huh. And then I saw a comment. See if I can make this up. I saw a comment that I really enjoyed, which was I'm gonna see if I can scroll back to it, which was uh, how do I get back to it? Somebody said, yeah, there's no way I'm, I'm messing up my stuff or something like that. That's how I feel about it. And I can't find out who said it anymore. But, oh, yeah, Gina. Gina said, I am not messing up my stuff. That's how I feel. I don't want to mess up my stuff. Oh, I almost did it. I almost did it. You're going to break it. I'm not going to break it. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gina, you can always fake it. See? Here it is. If I have to go to some meeting and I have to oh, you're gonna look, look more sleek professional. and I have to look more... Stickers are professional, I'm a designer, but I need to look more sleek or maybe it's not the right environment. Here it is. And also, because I change my machines quite often. So um, mm. that's that's the serious real reason why I started to, to use this little cover trick. Yeah. Because when you end up um, having to sell your computer, yeah. then you know you can have a better evaluation. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice and clean. That's so true. I learned my lesson after turning in my old Mac. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's why the cover. <laughs> but let's get focused on this work. There is a ton to do and time is ticking. Um, so let me know if you downloaded the assets. I hope that you enjoy them. Um, this is the branding. I, I had the go ahead of the client for sharing. Of course, if you use it, please tag me or uh, tag Print My Soul uh, just for copyrights, although I have uh, the freedom to share it. Um, I will suggest you not to use it for a client work but just feel free to use it for your own exercise. It's all there. 
I love sharing as you can see some of the images I took it from some of the illustration I took them from stock as well I believe in sharing just do it in a mindful way maybe you really like the P you can use it for another project fair enough but make sure to put your personal touch into it awesome um, also I'm gonna be running um, a illustrator stream daily creative challenge from the end of the month i think the 27th so after polls i believe after polls yeah. and um and we're gonna be learning how to do uh patterns that's why i'm not awesome. i'm not going too much in depth although if it's something that you really want to learn let me know in the chat we can keep it maybe for the end of the stream okay we're taking a little notes of what you guys yeah let us do. know if you want to learn patterns really quick at the end of the stream yes perfect so everyone should have those files and i want to go and make sure that everyone has their libraries open and cool. if you don't make sure to go into window and to libraries to make sure that your library panel is there we're gonna go ahead and create a new library for this project by clicking here on this down pointing arrow and click on create a new library here in order to create a specific library for this project I'm gonna call it plant plant brand assets and click on create to create a brand new library and then as easy as click and drag we're going to start creating new assets first thing i want to do is to click on the logo and click drag and drop it into the library and voila ready to be used Ooh. across our so um, i could use that where yeah we can use it in into our indesign so it's time to open our indesign so you were an illustrator yes i'm you gonna drop it into the library i drop it into a library and i'm gonna go ahead and open indesign that was our um, little presentation that we had before but I'm gonna start a new document by pressing command N. if you are starting in design from scratch this is still the first window that you're gonna have new mm -hmm. document and we're gonna start to create a new document now today let me know I want to know how many print designers are in the house because there is a possibility if you are interested to learn how to do finishing as well so mm -hmm. I can teach you and I can show you how to create layers to to do for example foil mm. how to do foil in an indesign we'll discover it if foil. you want what do you yes. mean by foil foil is that oh, should i have some example um, maybe we'll get one is that is the tomorrow. shiny let's see if i have anything here uh, that can help us but is the shiny the 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 shiny metallic mm -hmm. um elemental finishing you have any foil on your stickers <laughs> i don't have any foil on my stickers no i don't uh, but I'm sure that I'm sure that we're gonna grab something here. I, I'm, I'm in my studio, so I'm in design studio, so I'm sure that we can open something. I don't know at the moment. Let me see if we here we have something. No, I have my no math foil. books math. from elementary school. <laughs> still there. That's why I have to Gold start. foil. Oh, Gold foil. foil. <laughs> but um, I'm sure you guys you know what I'm talking about. When you have um, usually it can be a flyer, it can be a book, it can be a menu. You have a metallic. Mm -hmm. um, effect on it is actually uh, a stripe yeah. of foil that goes into it so there's a special process you yes need to do. tomorrow tomorrow I bring it i've actually have a full foil from foilco which is uh, cool. a uk um a brand that i that i use to print and i'll show you they do amazing foil and i'll bring the booklet awesome but let's get back to our menu let's do it so yeah let us know if you uh varnish carol exact you can have spot varnish which is that transparent gloss that you have on top or you can have the gold or silver or if you use a bespoke printer or whatever color you want metal finish but let me nice. know if you want to learn how to create that into indesign so we can also squeeze that in so i'm going to call this file food menu and i'm going to work with a six inches by nine inches and here i have a setup in millimeters because i usually work um, with uh, the metric system rather than the imperial one so if you're working into millimeters that equals to 152.4 for the width and 228.6 for the height and something that we really need to um, have a look at here one with, once we uh, are working towards a printed file um, is to make sure that we have bleeds and we're gonna see what bleeds are in the file and the templates that you download if you sign up on the on the mailing on my website you can see that there is already a guide with bleeds 
bleeds is an area around your margin, so around the end of your document that allows you to stretch the background in order to um, help the cutter. Because when we cut a piece of paper here, I'm just gonna show this, this booklet here. When we cut it and with trimmer, um, the, the, the trimmer is usually a machine with a big blade. And because usually we have, you know, quite a lot of paper cut at the mm -hmm. same time, the single piece of paper can slide. So we always allow our printer to have a margin or error of about three millimeters. So it's not gonna be pixel perfect. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be some... So if there is any issue there, we prevent it because mm -hmm. we extend the background so we're gonna have no white space. If you look at some cheap design or cheap flyer that you find around, you might see that there is a little bit of white mm -hmm. edge that is not supposed to be there. But that's because it's been cut outside the trimming line but let's go ahead and add some bleed so once we have a document we probably have a better view of what we're talking about standard is usually three millimeters because that's the margin of error mm -hmm. for uh, the print and um in terms of margin 12.7 is quite generous i would say at least 10 7 to 10 millimeters is the safe zone here now make sure that we have this little link selected so you make all settings the same as the usual uh, little information um, pop up tell us and make sure also that we are working in CMYK I don't know who brought that up before but that's a very good question very good topic CMYK is for print and also we want to make sure that here we have um, a facing page unticked uh, because facing page is going to put our page one next to the other where we're doing just a single page so it's going to be front and back and we don't need to have the page next to the other and we're going to untick it to make sure that that's there and it looks like we are ready to go nice yes let's go i'm going to press create but even if you get something wrong you can always come back and make yes, changes of course very good point there are two ways of doing so um one here from the properties panel you can actually adjust for example landscape to portrait mm -hmm. i love that i think that was last year i think that was 2019, 2018, so with WCC 2019, mm -hmm. when we had this new new uh, working space, because before you had to go back and, and do it from the window, but these beautiful property panels allow us to toggle between the portrait and the landscape in one click. Nice. Very good point. So if you wanted to do it the old school way, shortcut is Option Command P to trigger the document setup. And Command Alt P on a PC. Um, yes. Or Control Alt P. Control Alt P. Control Alt P. Yeah, I'm making it harder. <laughs> and just you know, we got some P PC people in the house. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So, let's see. And actually, uh, before you continue, yep. I just want to remind you guys about the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Make sure that you submit your work. We'll be reviewing it in a little under, wow, a little under an hour now. Time's going by so fast. Yeah, that's so. what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> so. Everybody's looking at me, nobody saw it. <laughs> They're going to go back and rewatch it, though. <laughs> um, but yeah, so make sure you submit your work. There's a link uh, um, right, right above the chat, actually. It says, join the Illustrator Discord. You can click on that and make sure that you submit your work. Also, I kind of want to run a, a test, because according to the numbers I'm seeing right below the video it says this, that there's six uh i'm sorry 267 people watching 267 people watching so that's a lot and also right next to that i see a like button and only 22 people have liked it so if you're listening to me go click on that like button now like that blue one and i want to see that number go up all right yes <laughs> please if you like it <laughs> if you like if it you like it. Well, and, and there's no dislike button so if you dislike it also click that like button <laughs> yes <laughs> you can always like you can only like us <laughs> you can only like us that's the only choice we give you so let's go back into uh what we were saying uh the adobe libraries the cc libraries mm -hmm. and we can go here and find our plant brand assets and boom our logo is re there ready to be used now let's go back into our illustrator file and click and drag more of these elements into our library just so we're, they're ready to go. If sometimes you see or you've been given a file and it looks like it's all white and empty, make sure to press Command uh, Y to see this, what I call the skeleton um, of the illustration to make sure that if there is something there, a majority of the time... And what was that keyboard shortcut again? Command Y. Command Y. Yes. Awesome. Um, so we go back into normal view here 
and you know if you want you can keep dragging and creating all different shapes of course you know those are all nothing is locked if for whatever reason you cannot click and drag onto the artwork and go into layers and make sure that there is no lock over here if something is locked uh, that's the reason why you don't you're, you're unable to to move it uh, also, By the way, um, I see 54 likes now, so thank you so much. That was like, what, 20 something? Yes, 25 20, or so? 25 good people. <laughs> awesome, thank you. <laughs> um, uh, I think Tunk was one of the people who hit like, <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> Sorry, so, continue. Uh, Satomi is asking me, how do you know if CM, it is CMYK? So let's go back. I think Roberto Let me see. is already uh, replied to that. That's usually happen when you create a new document, mm -hmm. but otherwise, uh, we can go into, let me just see, here, command, and to create a new document. My laptop is thinking here. And we have, uh, oops, it's not showing over here, that's a very good question. We have the bleeding, the slug. I've probably been working for um, print before. Let me see, I don't but know. let's see, let's see. We can go into our color settings. So usually, um, probably because I've been working with print and I uh, saved preset from the new document, it didn't allow me to choose. Usually, you can choose CMYK or RGB directly from the new document. But otherwise, don't worry. Um, you can also always go into edit and color settings into your InDesign file and make sure that you are working um, either with the RGB spaces or coded spaces. And also uh, the most important thing will be when you export the file as well to double check that. So it should be under edit, convert to profile. Is that what it is? Edit, convert to profile here. Yeah, I was looking at the color setting mm -hmm. first to make sure which color setting were available. Um, but here we have source spaces, which is definitely going to be those illustration and then the working profile is CMYK. Nice. Um, here it is. But usually, um, let's go back to the home and see if there is create new. Maybe it gives me more option here. Usually you're able to um, see it directly from our, from our new document page. I'm going to have to research that because probably you can research that while we work. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, Usually I'll we have it, it here. Let's see. We should be able to have it into... I have a little, have a little look, Jesus. Because mm -hmm. uh, I think that's because I, I mainly use InDesign. So I probably have saved some settings. But it should be here um, under our new document. But let's go back to our um, InDesign document. Into our food menu that we were w working on here it is again if you want to toggle between different workspace here make sure to go into window and at the very bottom you have all the files that are open and food menu is the one that I'm working on now let's get started by uh, creating some masters and when I talk about masters they are some settings that you can save and then apply to the different pages I like to make sure that I have them saved somewhere so I can then apply it or not into the pages. You can find them into the page panel up here on your right. If you do not have the page panel, remember window and make sure that your page is ticked. And I'm going to double click on the A master. Um, and this is going to be our A master here. First thing that I'm going to do is to go into my text in my type tool to create a text box. Text box. So I'm going to click on it and click and drag to fill our margin um, with a text box. And then I'm going to start with the first trick, which is going to be Command B to trigger the text frame option. And in this case, I'm going to click two in order to have two different column here. Gutter, I usually use between three and five centimeter. Maybe we can even use five. Let's keep it, let's keep it to four. I think that's in between, a good in between. Okay and I'm gonna press OK. As you see, the gutter is this space in between the two columns and that will allow us to maximize the use of the page. And instead of having long line, we can actually break the text in two columns, but still writing and treating one single column. Now, something that you wanna do on your master is to make sure that you go into layout 
margin and columns and you have that split now if you decided that this that the the gutter between the two columns that you want to have um, is four millimeter make sure that when you create columns within your um, document so we're just going to have two columns here make sure that the gutter is also consistent with the one that you're going to do for your text frame and press ok so no. I think Alberto answered the question. Yep. It says, when you open document setup, on top it says intended for print, and there's different choices, including web. Oh, and that's why you already gave me the same one. Okay, so document set. Oh, correct. Yep. Thank, Thank you, Alberto. You. Thank you, Alberto. Very, very clever. I think that I'm still used with the older version. Mm -hmm. Well, I think yep. that InDesign helps you. But we're going to have a look when we export as well, just to make sure that we are doing everything right in terms of colors. Yeah. And I always, always suggest to print your file into your home printer, even if it's a low resolution. Uh, so even if the color is not perfect, it gives you an idea, especially when mm -hmm. you work with color like purple and blue, and maybe you have black text mm -hmm. on top of it. Be careful when you do not have enough contrast, mm -hmm. or maybe you have a light yellow and white text. Make sure that you print it to have an idea. So once you apply the master, in this case here, we have created these um, columns here. What you have to do is to click and drag into the page in order to apply the masters. And by magic, if we go here and we're back into our um, pages, they all have the same settings. So you can do things, for example, like, I don't know, setting the, the website. So um, if we go and click on the type tool and we uh, set www. Uh, plant eatery.com and I'm just gonna leave it like that we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the the text in a second but I'm gonna press command C go back into my master if I press command V uh, to paste that and perhaps bring it here at the bottom because we already have applied the master to our pages once we go to our pages boom here it is we have our element there now bear in mind that if you use something yes some elements in the in the master you won't be able to edit it into your pages but you can always go back into your master and edit it from there now this is also a very very work way very uh, fast way of working because allows you to uh, be consistent and not you know for example mm -hmm. imagine if you have a nine pages 12 pages menu and you want to put the log on the top right you need to do that once into the masters but let's start to get some colors in from Illustrator. So at this point, I'm just going to click and drag um, our color palette and I'm going to copy and paste it by pressing Command V. And in this case, I'm doing that because I don't really want to import the file from Illustrator with the library just because they're going to be there as a reference. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and choose my rectangle tool and click it up from the bleed. As you can see, the bleed is that red I'm gonna zoom in for a second I press ok I'm gonna zoom in for a second so you can see um, here that this is the bleed the red, the red line. margin outside the uh, trim line the trim so line all those is lines, that, all those guys are color coded and they mean different things yes so we have our um, margins internal mm -hmm. margin which are here the purple which is the safe area within we have to have the text then we have this black line which is the trim that's when the cutter is gonna go Mm -hmm. And then we have this little space, which is going to give us that the error, margin room. of error, wiggle room. Mm -hmm. So if the cutter, perhaps, instead of chopping here, chops here, we're still going to have still the same background. Now, that way you avoid having like a white line or something. Exactly. So um, we're going to pick this color here. Oops, the rectangle flew away. Well, so, they said mm -hmm. that the pattern looks amazing. Oh, I'm very glad. Again. We need to figure out who made this plate because that was my inspiration. As soon as you can show that there while I work. This is the this is the plate that was the whole inspiration. This is the cloudy plate. I don't even know. By where the I got by it. the good people of Kitchen Craft. <laughs> I feel like we're giving a lot of like plugs to all yes. these companies today. Well, <laughs> it's our, it's a hard time for everyone to work, yeah. so it's good to share the love. There you go. I'm gonna bring my layers panel here. Um, and I'm going to start by creating a first layer and I'm going to call it background and that's where my background lays and usually uh, that's where also my palette lays and I can lock it so once mm -hmm. I'm going to start and play with the text my rectangle doesn't get lost again and I'm going to create sorry one second a new layer oh, you love your text. layers I love my layers and I'm going to press ok you're going to 
say something? No, no? you like layers, that's all. <laughs> I love layers. Um, so probably something that you want to do as well is to start to create your own uh, workspace. So we definitely need layers, we definitely need pages, we definitely need our beloved libraries, mm -hmm. but we're going to start and use our uh, styles. So we definitely need a paragraph styles because we are going to create some styles in order to edit our text much faster. And once you're done creating you um, your favorite uh, workspace, at the moment, those are the main uh, panels that I need. Layers, pages, library and properties. Uh, links can stay there. Character style usually is, is something that I use very often. Um, what I do is to go into my workspace up here where it says essential and we create a new workspace, which I'm gonna call menu design and panel location and, and, and customization is going to be saved so if we ever um, start to make a mess with our panel we can always go back and reset our menu design mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, we have that in place and that's going to always be there every time that you open your InDesign but let's go into our Word document if you have downloaded the file from my website uh, I'm imclady.com slash resources you'll be able to access um, the menu i put it in word but also in pdf just in case you cannot open a word yeah. document you'll be able to lift it from i'm there. curious to know what you guys would order from this menu that yeah, buttermilk so burger looks now. so good right now so. don't talk to me about food i'm just gonna try to ignore it so uh, all i'm doing here is simply command a to select Ooh, command eggplant C. parmigiana that's probably maybe mm -hmm. what i go <laughs> and then we come back here and press command b but actually i just remember something that i think our friend Tony told us. I'm gonna just try here because I'm. Are you talking about uh, Tony Harmer? Tony Harmer. Yeah, he um, was recently on Adobe Live with yes. Live from the Sofa with, with uh, Stephanie and Rufus. Yes. Yeah, just last Friday, and I think he'll be on again this Friday. So. so, I hope that I'm gonna do this right, Tony. And I'm gonna just save this menu here. I'm gonna put it on my desktop and call it Menu Text, because I think that Adobe Max Tony came and told me, you know that you can drag and drop it. A word file into any. Um, All right, let's let's check design. it out. Let's see. So we have the menu so, here. So you saved it as a doc, yes. as a word file. Yes, as a okay. word file, and I'm gonna click it and drag it into InDesign. No. See what happens. Was it a word file? Is it a word file or a PDF? But I'm pretty sure that it was a word file. Uh oh. Let me see. Let me see. I have too much stuff open here. Let me see if that was the case. Otherwise, you can click and drag. You can um, drag and drop. Um, but let me see. So here, oh, look at this. Even better. Okay. Even better. So what I had here, this is my file. This is uh -huh. my menu file. All I did, I click it and drag it the entire file. Entire so I didn't file. even open it. And I drag it into InDesign. And you have, as you can wow. see, this little, the text is loaded there. All I have to do is to click and we have it there. Wow. And he's even keeping the formatting that keeping was there. the format. So that's awesome. what I've done. Click and drag the entire word file. So you don't even need to open it. You don't even have to have word. You click and drag it into InDesign. Thanks, Tony. He told me this. Right. Well, um, he gave me this shot before. Tony my, Harmer, the design ninja. Yes. And again, you can check out his live stream from what was it on fr i think it was on friday i think it's on every friday it's gonna be i know he's gonna be on again this friday but you want to watch tony check him out he was with stephanie and rufus on live from the sofa here at adobe lives yes and um i think it was at 12 so every yeah. friday at 12 p.m uk yeah. time yeah I'm not sure and i mean that. that tip has to deserve a like so click on that i don't even know why i don't even want people to click i don't even know it doesn't help us at <laughs> so all <many> <laughs> numbers i'm just looking at the number and i was like, oh 60 cool let's see well i want to see how high we can get it like okay. we don't get anything extra i don't even know if it matters for anything <laughs> But I just, I'm we just love curious. your love. We love yeah. you. We, we love, love your love. love. It, you know what? It matters. And it, still, it still needs a little bit of love here. Yeah, it, it matters for our egos. <laughs> <laughs> His ego. I'm oh, just kidding. Let's get the work started. And remember, <clears throat> submit your work because we have about 30 minutes. So there's a couple. Oh, yeah, submit your works. We have about 30 minutes for the Adobe Illustrator InDesign, uh, um, InDesign, the Adobe Illustrator Design Challenge. Paul Tranny was uh, working today on a 3D, 3D fly machine. Yeah, he was. It was a, a flying machine using basic 3D shapes and 3D tools. It looks really cool. 
I'm dying to see what you guys created. So make sure that you submit your work so then Claudia and I can give you our um, thoughts on your work. Amazing. And the link is right above that. Click on join the Illustrator Discord link. It should be right up above the chat next to the Illustrator logo. So let's keep going with this text. And, uh, and there's a couple of questions here. So we're not going to go with the text. Uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, uh, questions. Yeah, questions. questions. Um, can you do the same thing with a PDF as you did with a, with a, a Word file? I'm going to have to try it. We're going to have to try uh, it. I'm going to have to try it because I've not tried that before. Uh, let's see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, perhaps maybe we have it here. I'm going to show you all my secret. All your secret files. All my secret files. All, your, all, the, all the Print My Soul company secrets. All my secrets. Print My Soul secrets. And we have the menu text. This is into PDF. That's the PDF. There. All right. We'll try yeah. it. We'll so see if it works. I'm just going to put it here. That's the food menu. So we're doing it right. Uh, no, I'm not going to remove it. Oops. Should have said yes. Sorry, guys. A little bit of a. Uh, oh, I can just drag it on the side. Let's see if that works. And then, or maybe we can just drag it from here. Yeah. Click and drag it. Now, um, so here we have an image of the text, mm -hmm. but we are not, as you can see, once you have this little button here, allows you to move the image that tells you that there is a frame mm -hmm. and inside there is an image so, so if we not... click and drag a pdf is going to be loaded as an image while if we click and drag the word document is going to load the text so you can do it from a word file and actually you could also do it from a, a, a rich text format yeah. text uh, file and <clears throat> the yeah. next question is um i am sorry i'm not going to be able to pronounce your name but Gil... Gilliam. 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 Gilliam, sorry for your mispronouncing your name. Can I use two master pages and choose which one I want to use to my working page? Sure, you can have infinite number, infinity, infinity, an infinite, an infinite, <laughs> an infinite number, on an infinitive number of master pages. Um, you can go here and click into uh, none and also on plus to create more masters. So you have master A, master B, mm -hmm. up to the infinity. And you can set up the master and in order to apply it all you have to do is to click here and drag it as you can see i'm probably going to zoom in so you can see that better there is going to be a little black frame um, showing inside the page can you see mm -hmm. so wherever you're going to drop that little uh, master in is going to be affect that single page you're going to have as many masters as you want and you can apply it randomly to a page one master per working page but you can have many master and different pages with different master applied. Okay, that usually makes a lot of sense when you have left and right, you can perhaps have two different masters and make sure that everything that is on the left page, for example, if it's a book, the number, they're going to be at the bottom right or the bottom left and you can have two different... Maybe your logo's on one side, but then like name of the books yes. on the other or whatever it is. I feel that tomorrow if we do a little bit more of that guide, maybe mm -hmm. I can show you a little bit more of this stuff. But let's go back into our page. Something that I want to show you, best friend, is shortcut, com option, command. Sorry. Um, oops. Let me go back into my move tool here. It was selecting... A, um, if, if you select a text frame and you press command option C, when you have this little plus over here, it's going to show whatever is left of the frame. Uh, as you can see, I have more text here, but we're gonna start to copy and paste the different area that we want. So first thing that I wanna do is to start to create some paragraph styles. I usually apply the paragraph styles to the entire text, and then I'm gonna start and create different level of hierarchy within the text in the menu. So, of course, we have the tapas, we have the mains, we have the sides of the menu. And um, let's see there if we can double click. So all we have to do is to go back into our text, make sure that we are on the text layer, background is locked, command A to select it all, and go into our property to start to play with it. As you remember, the font that we were using given by the actual um, um, guidelines was Bryant because the other one is for the chunky one is for the text so i'm gonna go ahead and um, look for bryant remember if you don't have it is on the uh, download assets and i'm gonna go ahead and choose a um, regular we like this font because it's nice and round easy to read 
and I'm gonna make I think a 10 and I'm gonna hit OK 10 is perhaps a little bit small can bump it up to 811 and uh, once I'm happy with it I'm gonna put it into the background we can see that if we use a black on, on top of this color it's not gonna work so uh, I usually like white to have the higher contrast because people want to know what they're eating so here under properties I'm gonna go into fill and click it into paper which is our white RB says hi Claudia and Jesus hi RB hello hi thank you so much for joining us so once we have these basics which is our uh, text uh, which is gonna be the, the base I'll, I'll call it the base paragraph style um, for our text I'm going to make sure that we have this text selected uh, the, the text frame selected and I'm gonna go here where it says paragraph style I'm gonna click on this little plus to create a new style actually perhaps I'm gonna select the, the entire text I'm gonna click into my uh, text frame and press command A to select it all and then go back here just to make sure that we really lift the, uh, the paragraph style I'm gonna double click it and call it copy in terms of the main text the main copywriting of the um, or you can call it base text or if you're doing menu perhaps this is totally up to you you can totally call it food description that helps if you're working on a team to name your paragraph mm -hmm. style so correctly and as detailed as possible to the actual project Make it easy for everybody to read it yeah. so I'm gonna call this one food description so we're gonna keep these for the actual description of the text and then I'm gonna start styling so I'm gonna go one level up which is gonna be the actual name of the food okay. so in this case the junk pancakes and so on yeah. and I'm gonna use one of the colors here from our um, palette perhaps I'm going to use let's see what color I can use this yellow can give us a nice contrast or maybe the green let's see I'm gonna go ahead with the green first and I'm going to go back into my Bryant font and make it definitely a bold maybe maybe even so I, I say bold and I click medium but <laughs> I should have really done a bold here and definitely bump it up a bit make it make it into a 13 for now it doesn't matter if it's gonna be too big we'll be able to edit everything in a snap exactly because we are creating our paragraph style as you can see now our food descriptions got a little bit of a plus because we are overriding even if you click on it it should tell you overrides um, but don't worry about it we're creating a new style so I'm gonna go ahead and click on our create new style here little square with a plus and I'm gonna call this style food name now as you can see I'm showing you two ways in which you can edit the name one is to click directly here into the paragraph style panel or we can go into double click oops, into the actual uh, line of the name and you have more options now it's important because here we can look at more options uh, that are important for us for example I'm probably gonna add a tab let me do that ahead so I'm gonna click between the name of the food and the tab and the and the price and I'm gonna um, click and have a tab I think the actual um, uh, the actual shortcut to see the tab let's see if I remember well I've noted it so I'm actually going to go through my notes uh, because I really want to show you that let me see if we can find it on the notes well, you find that, let me just remind everybody that we have the Adobe Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge review coming up in about 20, or uh, yeah, 20 minutes. So make sure that you submit your work. There's a link right above the chat that says join the Illustrator Discord, which will get you into Discord and you can submit your work on there under the challenge channel. So make sure that you do that and we'll be reviewing Sorry. those in about 20 I minutes. I haven't found the notes, but actually remember, and I tried few, so it's option command I. Ooh. You can see uh, what sort of um, um, things you have going on in the text. So this it means that there is a paragraph break, this is a line break, um, and this little double arrow is the uh, tab. So if we go back into the text here and we delete it, there is no tab. Once we click tab, there is now a tab. And what was the keyboard shortcut to see the overlays? Um, option, Command, I. Control, Alt, I on Windows. Yes, yeah, and Option, Command, I on Mac. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a tab here to all my uh, name. I'm just mm -hmm. gonna do this first section first. 
and once I click onto the food name, we'll be able to uh, check the space of the tab mm -hmm. directly for all the name of the menu. But before doing so, I almost forgot, let me just go back, we have the two columns. As you can see now, the text is extended. Mm -hmm. We really want to make sure that we click, keep them two columns alignment. So what I'm going to do is to press Command B, new shortcuts, better take notes, Command a lot B. of shock. Someone called me, I think I was in a stream with Christine and told me that I was MacGyver. The MacGyver, the, the MacGyver I remember that, yeah. So here, um, again, click on your text layer. Oops. Select your text layer, Command B. And we're going to have two columns. I remember the gather mm -hmm. was four. And we're going to press OK. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just laughing because I can see your mom in the chat and she's talking about having red wine together or something. <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about. As you can see, instead of, <laughs> instead of doing anything else, watching their daughter on Adobe Live. Yes. And <clears throat> so what I've done here, I went back to the paragraph that we were editing. Uh, paragraph style was food name. Double click on it to, take, to uh, open the paragraph style option. And I'm going to go into tabs. See here, it says tabs. That's what we need. And we're going to click on preview to make sure that we see the preview light. And we're going to click on this little guy here, which it tells you the right justification of the tab. Mm -hmm. So where the text is going to hand. If you use the left one, we're going to see where it starts. So make sure that we select this little guy here. And we go into our tab and we really push it towards the end of the column. And as you can see, What's happening here, the text is actually moving mm -hmm. to the end of the second columns. And I'm gonna press OK. And now look what happened. Whenever I'm gonna select the text that is supposed to be a food name, boom, it's gonna straight away mm. push the price you can just at the click right on place. It and here it is. Wow. And we're gonna start to again go over all our names, see how fast it is, and if for whatever reason we need to change this option, see perhaps there we have a... a we have a, a question from Kimmy. How do you equally space the paragraphs? How do I equally space the paragraphs? So are we talking um, in terms of two columns? Is that the question or in between? Mm, maybe you can clarify the question, Kimmy, yes. and maybe we can help so you. So the, the reason why we have paragraph left and right and they are equally spread, we're going to fix that in a second. At the moment, I'm just working with all the text. I'm going to split the top and the main. Uh, but usually if you press option command C, it spreads equally. So uh, option command C fits the frames into the text. And once we have all the text loaded, it kind of crops the, the, the two columns. And what was the shortcut then, again? Uh, option command C. And it does? Um, it kind of fit, fit, it loads all the text. So if there is some text hiding, mm -hmm. it loads it all in. In this case, we have two columns, so it's going to load it into the two columns and it's going to be automatically spread. But we are a long way through understanding what is going to be our final layout here. We're just, we're just working with paragraph style, content, legibility, and hierarchy. That's what we are doing right now, which are the most important things. So we need to be able to read it. That's why we choose the color. Now we're going to space that a little bit because it <laughs> feels a bit cramped. And also I think it's slightly um, big. I'm just going to go ahead and finish off here um, our food name. Now the reason why it's not giving the, the, it's not spacing the price to the end is simply because you see we don't have this double line. We didn't have the tab, so all I have to do is to cancel the space and make sure that there is a tab there. And then we go here, we have a tab, so we double click and we apply the food name. God, the green goddess pasta. <laughs> Sounds delicious, especially if you're hungry. Yeah, like yeah. I said, let us know what you guys will order off the menu. Like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably gonna order the, ooh, I didn't see the mac and cheese. I'm definitely going for the mac and cheese. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the food description and make that um, go into basic uh, character and make it a 10. I think that it was a little bit uh, mm -hmm. too big and that will allow us to come down in size for the name as well. But also something that I noticed when we started to um, stretch it is that the words were uh, kind of breaking. As you can see here, we have some breaks. Um, and we don't really want that because that make it, see for example, important is breaking. Mm -hmm. That's called iPhone. So we don't want the iPhone nation. So we can do that. We can uh, um, uh, un 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 untick that. We can uncheck, untick, yeah. Disapply? <laughs> I make up words. Disable. Disable. I make I make up words. If you guys know me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm creative. 
I'm gonna come up with a T-shirt line with made-up <laughs> words that Claudia has said. <laughs> oh, then you're and gonna I'm start just, a I'm production. Just gonna wa- I'm just gonna walk around town with random <laughs> words. So we can disable our hyphenation by clicking here on hyphenation. I'm still into the paragraph styles and click into hyphenate. So I'm gonna yeah, zoom in because I don't. It... Yep. So that's if you want it hyphenated. So you can see on the left hand side uh, where, where it says bread. You see how there's a yep. hyphen next to it? And then when you uncheck it, it goes away. I mean, the word goes into the next line. So in this in this way, it's going to keep all the words uh, together without splitting them. We're mm-hmm. basically saying, hey, we don't worry anyone splitting. If that's yeah. not your case, keep the hyphenation ticked and let it do its job. And you can also um, specify after how many letters or before how many letters you want the hyphenation. I don't want it, so I disable untick it or whatever word I created for it before. Eric says that this apply is fine. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to press OK. And then <laughs> perhaps I'm going to go back into my food names. And I'm going to go into my basic character and make that uh, 12. I think that looks fine. And I'm going to press. Before we press OK, something that we want to talk about is the space in between the food name Mm -hmm. and the uh, food description and then the next one because we really want to start to break down the text to increase legibility there so we do that directly from the paragraph style when you do menus paragraph style are your best friend because you only change things once and it applies to the entire document so best friend there paragraph style options so in this case we're going to go into the um let's see uh paragraph indented spacing par- so paragraph style option all i did is to double click on the style that i want to edit go into index and spacing well, which is the description so it's going to give us this little bit of breather in between one food so you can read one think if that's the right plate mm-hmm. for you and then go on to the right other one and just kind of give you a little bit of a piece into into the reading well the space after is going to increase the space in between the title and the food description so it doesn't look squashed and cramped so I think that a three millimeter is quite decent space and then a one millimeter after because we need to keep the consistency because at the end of the day it's the same kind of block of paragraph so we keep it together and always make sure that the distance between elements they're part of different groups for example one food and the other food is greater than the space between the um, the elements of the same group f- to reinforce proximity and uh, to make sure that you understand, oh, this is the title and this is the des- description, just with one glance. Once we're happy with it, so we added some space before, uh, which is good, again is going to bring us out. I'm just going to exaggerate it so you can see where it's acting there. If you want to give it a more of a breather, feel free to do so. At the moment, I'm going to be stuck with three. If you need it later on, we can do more. And space after is the one that separates the title from the description. I'm going to keep it to one to keep it nice and clean. Make sure the hyphenation is off as well. Now, as you can see, if we go to uh, general, um, this paragraph style is based on the food description. And because we disabled the hyphenation on the food description, it disabled here as well. Mm. Super clever, super clever in design. And I'm going to press OK. Now, there was supposed to be a text. Not a problem. Just make sure that you are within the paragraph and click at the right a paragraph style and boom is gonna uh, stay there just like that just lay down and again just a quick reminder we have about 10 minutes before we review 10 minutes, ten minutes oh my gosh. before we review the illustrator hopefully we have some challenge. times afterward as well thankfully we have tomorrow we have, we have to tomorrow. show you a ton of things yeah so and i was worried that i didn't have enough content she was worried she didn't have enough content <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back here for example what happened if we want to keep these in one line and we have our little tab here, but unfortunately, um, it's too squeezed. We have the time, we have the uh, the name. Mm-hmm. The Sometimes price. I chop text, but the client don't like it. No. So <laughs> I don't suggest you that. What I suggest you though is to work on the kerning, which is the space within letters, mm-hmm. and you do so by selecting um, your uh, text and then go into your character little panel here under properties and as you can see we have here this little guy i'm just gonna highlight it here that shows us the space in between letters and that's called uh, that's called kerning kerning so i'm gonna i'm gonna 
put it, I never go over 30 because otherwise it's a little bit cramped. What you can also do, you can also uh, scale horizontally the text so it gets a little bit smaller. But again, I never go lower than 90, otherwise it looks a little bit messy there. But once we are done, we can also go into our character style and press new to create a new character style that overrides our power st powerful <laughs> um, paragraph styles. And I'm gonna call it uh, kerning. And that, so every time we wanna apply, we wanna, let's see if there is something else, somewhere else where we can have that, probably at this one, make sure that we have our tab here. I click and select and apply my kerning, mm. perfect. It works. If you needed awesome. to do it more, you can also double click and change it. If you perhaps you needed to, uh, you know, for whatever reason, uh, add a little bit of kerning so you have a little bit more space. Now we need to talk about this title. So we've done the food, then we've moved up into our um, food description, and now we're going to go to the headings, which are, you know, what kind of food uh, categories is in. And the reason why I work the way from the text into the categories because you can see the majority of the text into a menu is the the description. So it's much easier than to just highlight. You know, I'm just I just I just do everything in whatever is the most distribution. So in this case, is the general text, mm -hmm. and then I move into whatever is less and whatever is less, which is in this case is the. Uh, Zara is asking, could you do it in two lines? Of course you can do it in two lines. Um, again, those are those are pr uh, preferences, personal preferences. Some people uh, perhaps will have a, a break over there. In menu, you don't see that very often because you really want to try to keep that together and you really do not want to emphasize the price. So we kind of just leave it on the side at the right. What we want to really want to entice is the food. If we break it into lines, we kind of have you know, the, the, the price sticks out a little bit more where we want to really keep the food description together. But mm -hmm. sometimes when I do a wine menu, they have <laughs> obnoxious long name, which I try to cut. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my clients is never really happy about it, but I try to chop them up. But uh, in that case, you cannot get away with it. You have two lines. or so if you have mixed grills and then you have all the description, it's going to be two lines. You know, your power as a designer better to do two lines rather than to do a crumb squeeze text so yes depends on your preferences and depends on the space mm -hmm. that you have also what looks good aesthetically it might look okay yeah. with two lines there it might look good with one line with adjusting the corning yeah it all depends on what it looks like so now i'm going to work on the food category oh this is a big love of mine which is a big noodle a uh, big noodle is something that i use quite often when i do this kind of fun graphic um, feel free to use whatever whatever font you like. I'm gonna bump it up to 21. Um, if it's something that we don't have, I don't know if it's available on Adobe font. Maybe it's the case to go and check real quick. Maybe Sus, you can check that. Do you mind? Yeah, it's Please. called. What is the font called? Big Noodle here. Big Noodle tilting. Let me see. If it's not, I'm gonna drop it into the folder. So you, if you want exactly my same uh, result, you can have that. Now, as you can see, we have the color from the colors watch. Uh, into our swatches here because we have imported this graphic. I have to rush. I have to. We have to do so many things. So um, I'm gonna select the orange it here to look create like a it's, nice. It doesn't look like Big Noodle is available on Adobe Stock. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you. Don't worry. So once I have roughly the sort of uh, text that I like, I'm gonna go ahead and create my new paragraph style, and I'm gonna call it here. Category. While you're typing that up, as Boodoo Val just reminded us in the chat, we have less than 10 minutes for the design feedback on today's Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. So make sure that you submit your work on Discord. There's a link right above the chat where Claudia and I are going to review Paul Tranny's uh, Daily Creative Challenge for today, which was the flying machine using basic shapes and 3D tools. So we're very excited to see that. Um, to see what you created, yes. so yeah, looking forward to give you some feedback. Yeah, less less than less than ten minutes, guys. So actually, get Let's get about done. six minutes. So, so in the meantime, in the meantime, I've created some underline option here, paragraph style option. Let's use something else. I use underline. 
underline on you can choose a different color or the text color let's see for example in this case leave the text orange and the line green but i like it to use them the same you can offset it so you can move it down or you can move it up i usually give it about two points and you can choose the weight you can also choose the type so it can be dotted or it can be uh, solid in this case because we're going to have already the graphic with the pattern i just wanted to keep it simple and leave it on a line and then something that we want to use here and this is going to be a magic that is going to happen Ooh, magic. is the span span columns here we have two columns but i want to make sure that we have a block where it says tapas and then mm -hmm. the maze and the size and it doesn't get confused so in order to do that when you have your category you gotta span it so you make sure that it goes through to the two columns and you can do that from your mm -hmm. paragraph style option span columns not single column span um, columns here span all and as you can see now it created already a space in between the two lines so uh, virtually this tapas takes both columns darren says he's heading out thanks darren for watching we'll see you come later. back tomorrow yeah, we'll i know it's, tomorrow. it's quite late in, in certain place italy is about 11. yeah darren is in uh, washington dc so that's i believe six hours less than here and i'm gonna go or ahead and apply my <laughs> category here yeah and by the way voodoo Val posted the link to the big noodle font thank you on voodoo. the chat Amazing. so thank you voodoo Val, for that so make sure that you click on it and download it if you want to use it on your project so we got about four minutes cloudy maybe like, actually three minutes <laughs> i just want to show you what happened there so as you can see side was up here uh, i'm actually pointing at my computer i should point it with the mouse but because <laughs> we applied it our food category e already split so we have our tapas here we have our main and we have our side one thing that we want to do is to make sure that we have some nice space before so we add perhaps five so we have space in between all these uh, all these different elements mm -hmm. um, I always the reason why I trigger all these little uh, glyphs here is because I always always wanted to ensure that you guys make the space in between paragraph with the um, spacing and not by creating different line enter 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 that create a map is mm -hmm. creates quite a mess by using it as you can see what that's what i'm doing i'm pretty much removing those spaces from everywhere and there we go here awesome we got marcos from costa rica pura vida costa rica is a beautiful country been there once loved it so if you haven't been you should go because it's a gorgeous gorgeous place now something that I want to do if I want to put that breadcrumb and tofu back to the same column, I'm going to press Fn function and return. And as you can see that breaks the column. So this is the little um, icon that you're after here. So that create a breaks. So I actually brought that uh, line. So same here. I think this is looking good. Perfect. So all we have here is we need to add our logo. I'm gonna worry about the allergens afterwards. I'm gonna press Command C to copy it. And I'm gonna perhaps press this text here. We're gonna deal with it maybe tomorrow. We don't have time right now. But I wanna bring in the logo. And I wanna show you why it's so important to use the logo link to the library. In this case, I'm just gonna use this logo for now over here. And I'm gonna click on Shift and Command in order to uh, scale it down. And I'm going to place it here on the corner. Now, the reason why I want to link and use the linked version of the file here instead of simply copying and pasting is because if I just copy and paste, for example, copy from Illustrator and paste to InDesign, what happens if I want to change something? So to change something here, I will have to delete it, change it and bring it back in and mm -hmm. reposition it. Well, if I'm using the linked artwork, all I have to do is to double click on my artwork which is going to open the InDesign file and let's see perhaps I want to make this uh, the yellow color so I'm just going to bring this yellow in uh, to make sure that we can pick the color so I'm going to select press on I to trigger the eyedropper and I'm going to make it yellow press command save go back into my InDesign file boom and there it is he updated and he, up, he updates it automatically so that's why use your library as you can see he uploaded he updated yeah. the artwork there as well and and something you have to make sure to do so so that it works like you just saw it here is you got to make that sound effect you got to go boom <laughs> 
and oh, then it'll work. What did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't make that sound effect, boom, it doesn't work. Yes. Yeah. And then you can go ahead and keep doing that with the other illustration. I'm just gonna use one here. I also wanna show. I wanna show you. I wanna share with well, you. Well, you have negative. 14 <laughs> seconds because it's time for the... <laughs> I'm just going to one minute. <laughs> All right, we'll give um, you one minute. Go. I want to show you some more uh, um, lockups that I've done so you can, you know, use it for yourself. I also created here all these other illustration, a lot of combination. Actually, I'll let you finish, but yeah. so I'm, I'm here and on Discord and I'm noticing that we don't have that many submissions for today with the time machine so that's what we really want to review we'll look at some older ones but make sure that you submit your work now you got about a minute because Claudia's going to show us one last thing so go into she discord says. submit <laughs> submit your work and make sure that it's there so we can review it in like 60 seconds all right yes. Claudia. so what i've done here i've um oops i wanted to bring this color palette here Oh, but it's into our background that is locked that's why it wouldn't let me do that so i'm going to bring it back into this other page perhaps it's useful to have it into your or master so you can have it there i'm going to use a background and the reason why i want to show you that is because for the back of the menu if we don't have any more um items to add let's see if i maybe make it black or we can make it purple again maybe we can keep it purple and I'm gonna click and drag on one of the artwork that I've created, which is this one. And you can simply use the back of your menu to really emphasize the illustration, the fun. Is a brand that allows us Gorgeous. to have fun. And um, I'm gonna leave it for that right now, so we okay. can jump in the Let's direction. Jump right but there we can. Let's the the um, Discord app. Let me just refresh and switch over to my. And by the way, screen. I just realized that I didn't save everything that we were doing. Oh so. no. <laughs> So here we are. This is um, the design feedback. So today, uh, Paul Tranny worked on this three uh, three D time machine in Illustrator. And if you don't know what we're talking about, make sure that you go into um, behands.net slash slash challenge slash Illustrator. I used to, I'm used to saying Photoshop, so I had to really think about that one. So behands.net slash challenge slash Illustrator. Paul Tranny is doing uh, nine challenges uh, from March 30th to April 10th on Illustrator. And you can scroll down. Make sure you click on this big blue button to take the challenge with Paul. Make sure you go into the community chat. That's Discord. That's where the um, challenges are submitted so that we can give you the design feedback. And make sure that you scroll down and watch the videos and download the starter files. So these are the challenges. And I'm going to move my laptop over so you can see as well. Thank you. And um, yeah, so this is what Paul created. He made this using uh, 3D. Super cool. Yeah. Is that that's Paul work? This is this is Paul, and we're gonna have to be rough with Paul because he's a professional. So <laughs> <laughs> not true. Paul it looks yeah. amazing. Yeah. No. Great job, Paul. It looks excellent. So this is what um, he created during the stream. So let's see what people what have created? submitted. And actually, let me refresh to make sure. <gasps> look how many graffiti are coming out. Yeah, oh, but we'll look at those too. We'll look at those as well. Good All job, right. guys. Let's see. We're pals. So we'll go and look at the time machines. All right, here we go. Here's my first strap. This is from Chocolita. Um, Illustrator keeps stopping, so I'm fairly, um, far from finished. My idea was to make some kind of magic oh, wow. box. And that's the cool thing about the daily creative challenges, because I often do them in Photoshop. Voodoo Bell is in the chat, uh, is doing them right now, I believe. I think I'm right, right, Voodoo Bell? Yeah, you're doing them now. I read your name earlier <laughs> that you did it. But the point is, is that we might show you some things, um, and then the idea is for you to take what we teach you and come up with something completely different. So it's super cool that you um are coming up with your own ideas it doesn't have to be a time machine it could be like this cool magical box so michelle is saying that is a quite of a hard one to do in such a short time mm -hmm. but that's understandable and that's you know as i said first of all safe space don't worry if you're not done mm -hmm. we are here to give you feedback and if the feedback is perhaps there for i help you to develop in a in a, in a better way mm -hmm. or if it's not done, it can give you an idea of different development. It's totally understandable. Thumbs up for sharing it, even if it's mm -hmm. not if it's not finished. We can totally get an idea. I love the moon. I love the yeah. crystals. Um, is that uh, a dragonfly at the back? 
It looks like an insect. I don't know if it's a dragon. But you know, with the moon and the crystal, you're already yeah. conveying. Yeah. You're already conveying the sort of yeah. um, topic that you wanna. Also, and I'm only saying it because this happened to me today. So like, I wanted to be a part of like this 3D design thing, and I didn't really have time to do anything, and the deadline was today. So I like quickly, quickly, like in 30 minutes, did something in 3D, and I was like, oh man, it looks terrible. But then I found like this awesome background and just threw it in there, <laughs> and it looks so much better. So the point I'm I'm... seeing it. I look forward to seeing it. I'll show it to you later. I'll share it tomorrow in the stream. But the point is, is that now. Um, that I'm trying to make with this is like maybe just not leave it with a white background just maybe find a cool magical image either online from Adobe stock or um, I keep forgetting the name of the, of the free unsplash. Uns unsplash thank you unsplash something that just looks cool that adds to your to your image and it'll it'll bring it out instead of just having like a plain white background but uh, good job it looks like you were having some issues so it's all good um, I'm not sure if this was today's challenge yeah there was no streaming wow and he said that he's not done what's his name george this george? is george and for some george reason car yeah it's not loading on on my let's try this one. Oh, look this is this is oh god this is awesome this is our um portraits you know what maybe we should do it on, on oh, your see. in let's case because mine is not loading the images and i know i was having some issues with the the connection here on my laptop for some reason on hers it works perfectly for some reason. For some reason. Might be the stickers. It might, it might be the stickers. I think the stickers help the Wi-Fi. So if you are in the Illustrator... Uh, Here I am. There you are. So let's go into your screen. There you are. And, and challenge. Yep. And then scroll down. Oh, okay. Sorry. I was a bit backlogged. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, we have more coming. This yes. in the sky. Well done. Awesome. Stay at home. That's a lovely machine. I'm going to yes, bring it over so, so you I can, can see it. I can see it. I'm fine. Thank you. I love it. So she integrated the background just to give it a little bit of yeah. a lift. And see what I mean? If you would have just left the white background, it just would look very plain. But, but by adding an interesting background that matches the theme, that um, also is it complements the box in terms of color. I think it just I love takes the it to the next level. Yeah, the different details. Gorgeous and I love the, the the why the wings. Well, I love the message. Stay home. <laughs> Stay home. Stay, Stay home. home. Yeah. Watch Adobe Live all day. Yes. Awesome, and that was from uh, Lucy, Lucy yeah. in the sky. In eight hours, she has to get up to work, and oh my gosh, you have to go out. Stay safe. Stay safe. Wash your hands and wear a mask and do everything that you need to do. And here we have George. That looks fantastic really cool and he said that he's not done but that's the concept i think it's fantastic you can totally you almost see like coming together yeah. it's almost coming together here and i love the hand i love the background it looks like i don't know it's like it came out of a screen yeah, you know, yeah. very, well because cool. you got that noise in the background so it feels like an old you know like the old tv i mean i'm gonna date myself here but i remember when <laughs> <laughs> when like networks used to go off like say all right guys you know we'll be back tomorrow like at 11 or midnight like tv stations used to go off and there was nothing but like white noise <laughs> that's super cool that's what it looks I'm gonna like say hi to shauna shauna's in the house shauna i was following your live on on instagram i guess which uh shauna are we talking about uh i cannot pronounce her last name i think in Shana, who lives in Shana Chicago. Shana, you Chicago. Yeah. Love you live. Oh, hey, Shana. How's it going? Um, and we did I, think she, I think she's Shana Parmesan on her on her on Instagram, Instagram. yeah. Instagram. Instagram, yeah. An illustrator. <laughs> All I can think is up now. So that's the first one we saw. And then we got this one here. Awesome. That's super cool. So we have a 3D well, Claudia and a 3D Asus. That's I, so first funny. of all, excellent choice on your male model. I mean, it just makes the image look a whole lot better. <laughs> it's so silly. Look, you're taking all them plot them thumbs up away. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we, 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 we had more thumbs up until I started making my, my bad comments. Now they're going down. Um, um, no, but the way, Sus really cares about having them thumbs up under the video. <laughs> so if you're watching the video, if you want to make him happy, you need some love, he's feeling lonely for this lockdown. So I was just looking at up. the numbers. I was looking that there was about 200 people, 250 people watching and there was like, I don't know, 20 thumbs up. I was like, hey, we need more. I don't, I don't know why we need more, but we That's need more. Fun. I love this one. Uh, Tank Borak. Tank Borak. 
Yeah, Tunk, he was in the chat earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's still on. Oh, there he is. He's, he's in the... Cool uh, stuff. Very, very, cle yeah. very, very clever yeah, idea. I love how you use the Behance. Um, yeah, that looks fantastic. It looks great. It looks fantastic. Well done. Simplicity, you nail the color, is on brand. Mm -hmm. Same Behance color. Very well done. Lovely, nice uh, background. Well done. Ooh. I don't even know if I'll be able to do something like that. <laughs> that That's looks so really cool. good. And you have almost like as if... What is the thing on the top? It's like where the like a, where the driving like a steering wheel. No, I don't know. It looks amazing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how it works, but I want to be inside. We want to look at the schematics of how yes. the time machine works. Yes. yes. <laughs> how is the time machine? That's well. I mean, that was what oh, the challenge was. I don't know if his is a time so machine. So cool. I love the wings as well. Love the patterns. Column combination is fantastic. Yeah, it looks the green beautiful. And the green gold. and the gold. Yeah, I agree. Very and well I, done. I would add the same comment, maybe add a background to it just to make it make it work. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I'm looking at, so this is a little bit like nerdy and technical, but like I'm looking at the highlight of the cube and you'll see that the highlight of the cube is like on the left hand side, like right in the corner. So that means that that's where the light source is coming from because there's no highlights anywhere else on there. So you will move this one? No, I would move the chat, the shadow. Because the shadow, because then that means that there's a light come. If the shadow's behind the cube, then that so means there's a light. Here? I mean, you can move the shadow to the right, or you can move the highlights of the image to the oh, front. To this front here. Yeah, because so it just kind of like hits it and yeah, then projects it. On the because side. the the shadows don't make sense, but I mean that's. Just, it looks fantastic. It looks awesome. And yeah. I didn't even notice, <laughs> but it's right. No, it's right. It makes sense having a coherent. <laughs> Um, um, by the way, Ceci, uh, if you if you update it, if you can, if you're able to move it fast, we'll go back and review it. So I love when people yeah. implement feedback. Well done. Just move the shadow. Yeah. Also, by the way, uh, Tunk wrote, I should add some thumbs up button to the box. He was the, the artist who created the oh, box yeah. with our faces. Yeah. Make sure that you add it on the inside because that's <laughs> so he's taken care of. I'm going to put a thumbs up on my face. So we have another uh, from Richelle. Richelle. That looks fantastic. I see think the background. It looks amazing. See, um, you found an X, and this is actually what I'm talking about. See, like you added this awesome background that fits the theme. It's very like grungy, and you know, you got all these different. I love the color yeah. theme. I think that uh, goes very well with brown. Very steampunk. My mom, if my mom is in the house still, she that's her favorite combination. Turquoise or like cyan mm -hmm. and brown. She that's all she wears. That's all we have in the house. So beautiful color combination. I grew yeah. up with this <laughs> color combination. It, it kind of like the sea and the dirt and the land. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Well done. Cool. The one thing, I'm, again, I'm, I'm going to be nerdy again. <laughs> Oops, sorry. I'm zooming in and zooming in. So the one suggestion I would have to like make it quote unquote technically better, more accurate, whatever you, the, the terminology is, is that the background is very dark and it has a lot of contrast. as where the foreground doesn't have a lot of contrast. So I would just try to give it more contrast so We're that... We're an illustrator. Yeah, you can take it on Photoshop. Oh, okay. You can, you can take an illustrator file into Photoshop, can't you? Okay. <laughs> you just showed it. Creative, drag it into the Creative Cloud, and then from there you can drag it into Photoshop and then add the background there We're and then geeking adjust here. it. Yeah, but... We um, love to jump from... But that's the, that's the beauty of the workflow. That's yeah. the beauty of having the, yeah. a, the workflow so um, easy to move between mm -hmm. the, the halves. Yeah, so I would just make, make the... Uh, the foreground element have more contrast so that it matches the background. Love it. So, Angie Babe. Oh, that's an helicopter machine steering. Very cool, <laughs> I think. I think it looks great. Is the is the shadow correct? I mean, look look at the look at the cube. So the sh the the brightest area is like on top, but it also looks like the front area also is bright. So that looks pretty good. Also, you can way. see the. Um, the propeller on top where the highlight is that, that means the light is hitting it from that angle so it's, it's pretty good master like of it. the lights and shadow i'm pretty ignorant so that's why i ask because <laughs> where i don't know i say it i'm, I'm not very good in illustration and re realistic i think that's a re realistic composition um so I, I love the transparency i love that you use this gray so we can actually see inside i'm a big fan of jars and glass so everything that i can see mm through i really really love it so i really like this and it's also quite different so very well done maybe think about a um a background yeah How about a, uh, just to just to tie it together yeah. but otherwise it looks no, fantastic. it looks fantastic yeah well done 
I love the way that she also balanced Well, the well, way. well, look who finally decided to join us. Dave, Dave. Clayton. Actually, <laughs> Dave wrote a book on InDesign. Yes. And you can get it you? on Amazon. It's um, how to. It's how to do that in InDesign, I believe it is. Dave Clayton, good friend of ours. He is out of uh, the UK. We're actually in the UK right now. Claudia and I are streaming from Manchester, and Dave Clayton is in Swindon. Big QPR fan, football fan, just like me. And he wrote a book on how to, yeah, it's how to do that in InDesign by Dave Clayton. So today we talked about InDesign. We talked about doing all these cool things. Dave wrote this fantastic book. Basically, one page is one tip. So yep. it's an easy read. We can highly, bring it tomorrow. We'll we have bring it, in it tomorrow. House. We have it in the house. So highly, highly recommend it. Dave Clayton, so thank you for uh, joining us in the chat. And I think that's it for today. We don't have any more. So do a refresh it. Maybe, maybe somebody submitted one before uh, while we were talking. Okay. Okay. Oh, are those new? Yes. So we have more. All right. Oh, this one's cool. Ooh. But see, again, adding cool. a cool background that helps support so the, isometric yeah and, and this one's and really the brain cool. and the machine very cool i can't think of like anything to say i think this one is, is super is, cool is ready spot to on. roll yeah spot on i was actually gonna like try to be picky and talk about margin but it was just because i'm zooming in so let's see who's done that seven yeah. seven seven big brain and bubbles we love it very yeah, we well done yeah voodoo Bell says we have about 10 minutes left and now is the time to ask any last minute questions yes Dave says, love you both. Love you back, Dave. Drop a link to your book in the chat, Dave. Kisses. Yep. And give us a plus. Give us a thumb up. Oh, yeah, These Dave. Guys <laughs> we're, looking for, we're looking for thumbs up. Ask your friends. <laughs> yeah. Our friends. So we have um, here Mary Cahill, which is, I think, the last one for today. Oh, this is the first kind of humanoid yeah, this transformer super cool. machine. This one, this one looks very anime. Really, really cool. I like it a lot. I like the background. I like the the theme. The background gives them like almost. Yeah, it's like it's jumping. moving. Yeah, yeah. It looks it looks like a, yeah, it looks like an anime when he's jumping. Very nice. I love the color, and it looks like those are the eyes as well. Very cool. I love when we have such a different uh, approaches, and that's what I think is good to be on Discord where you can see how one single brief, one single challenge can take life in so many mm -hmm, different mm -hmm. ways because you guys are amazing. Very well done, Mary. She hasn't done this properly, but she felt inspired to make a parachute box, man. Because uh, <laughs> uh, let's face it, we're all trying to fight without a parachute now. Yes, <laughs> super cool, super cool. Uh, let's see, I'm going to refresh one more time before we're jumping into Photoshop, into InDesign. Yeah, we gotta. We're gonna have about maybe less than about ten, less than ten minutes. So I think we don't have any more for today. Um, feel free to keep posting them. We're gonna be review them tomorrow as well. We're gonna be reviewing the Discord. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what's Paul got in store for tomorrow, but uh, before we say goodbye and we leave to I think the XD mm -hmm. daily credit challenge. I think is coming after us. Big reminder to go into onto my website on uh, here. If you go onto iamclady.com slash resources, you'll be able to um, download all the assets for today, which includes fonts, the illustrator file, the brand guidelines. And also if you um, put your email here and click on send me Clady resources, you'll also be able to access all these amazing gifts which are here oops i'm zooming everything i'm like a zooming <laughs> zooming zooming and if you want to perhaps watch this video again you can go into video and watch all oh. the other video and the graphic design and all my previews if you want to you know understand more about branding and logo you can definitely see some past video there so my website my i am cloudy website is mainly for resources and if you ever have a question, go on to my Instagram, which is I am Clady. You can also access it here from the bottom of the page. And I'll be more than happy to uh, reply to you if it's related to the stream, if it's related to the other challenges or other uh, Photoshop or Illustrator's question, you can find me as a mentor on Discord and as Suze as well. And the Photoshop uh, Discord. Yeah. And uh, here where it says, ask a question on this amazing channel, you'll be able to interact with us and also with this amazing international community of designer makers students professional that is adobe live 
Let's jump back and take advantage. It's like five minutes. Budava, let we us have, know. We have about five minutes, yeah. How many minutes do we have? Like, in a, we, we have five real minutes. Five real minutes, <laughs> not five cloudy minutes. Actually, we, we might have less, but yeah. We have four and a half cloudy minutes. minutes usually are like five That's like half an eight. hour, yeah. <laughs> no, but, but real minutes, go. I'm going to show here. So right. that's our cover. So tomorrow we're going to see how to uh, do uh, the actual file into gold i'm not going to do it right now can i do it right now let's see if i have well, if i have the website, website open or i don't let's see if we go into move so i use move uh to print a lot of my stationery uh, again i feel that today we're mentioning many many different we're just uh, plugging we're just giving all this free advertisement dave clayton <laughs> <laughs> move um, so i use the size of a large postcard yeah. which is six inches by nine and I'm just gonna be random here. Of course, the bigger the points is the thicker the paper and coated will allow you to use the foil. That's the main reason why mm -hmm. I'm showing you this. I'm gonna go with gold foil and click on start. So making. this is how you would do the, the gold foil that we we're talking about yes, earlier. Yes, yeah. for example, if you, if you, if, if you use a, a website, of course, this works also for any other printer, uh, but Moo allows you to see a preview, which is super cool. So what I'm gonna do here is to create another layer and call it gold. And press OK, and I'm gonna go back into my logo. Click Command to copy. Sorry, Command C to copy it. Delete it. Go back into my gold layer and press Shift uh, Option Command V to paste it in place. As you can see now, you can um, hide it. And I'm gonna press Command uh, E in order to save this as a JPEG. And I'm gonna call this. Um, CMYK because this is going to be the CMYK layer mm -hmm. and I'm going to press save two minutes, range, Claudia, two minutes. range we have page <laughs> number one to export it and then I'm going to trigger the gold and make sure that we hide the other rest of the element press on command E in this case we're going to export it into a PDF for print and call it gold and make it here on the desktop and click on save so as you can see what we've done, we have created um, two different layers. Uh, actually to remember, if we want a gold, we really want to make sure that we use, um, I think it's the black color. So I'm just going to click and swap it into uh, the black. Just going to click it here, <laughs> delete it. It's really, really fighting with All time. All right, Claudia, we got one minute. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it here. I'm going to export it again. Cool. Gold. And if not, we're going to do it tomorrow, but for <laughs> now, we This just, is the practice round. This is the practice round. I'm going to press export. So we have the first page here and I'm going to go back into Moo. And once we upload the first one, it will be uh, the front, which is going to be the CMYK it. here, which hopefully we can find here done. And then when we go back to the other layer, we import the separate gold foil layer as a separate mm. file okay so cool. what we have here that's why we saved it into different layer hopefully we have it here gold open it's happening it's happening i know we have one minute but mm, it's just loading <laughs> people <laughs> are like you can times see up, it's there up. and once we upload it hopefully we can preview it here it and is. There it is. That's how you get gold. Um, before we do anything else, I just want to remind everybody to stick around because we have a full day of Adobe Live up next. Is my good friend Howard Pinsky is going to be doing a, an XD Daily Creative Challenge. I think he's working with sound today. If he's not, then my oh, bad. Super cool. <laughs> but anyway, make sure you stick around for Howard. The day started out with Paul Tranny doing the um, getting getting started in Adobe Spark. Then we went with Budu Val for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Then it was my friend Christy Odom doing uh, Lightroom presets. She'll be on again tomorrow. Then Paul Tranny for the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge, which which we reviewed. Then we were with Claudie doing editorial design. Howard is next. We got Kyle Webster coming uh, right after Howard to do a draw along. And we're going to end the day with, of course, Voodoo Val and Cody Bear doing a design up. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, big shout outs to everybody on the chat. Thank you, Jan, Tunuk, Anik, um, Voodoo Val for helping out. 
Uh, Dave Clayton's in the chat. Make sure you check out his book. Make sure you check out the podcast, He Shoots, He Draws. Excellent podcast. Listen to my podcast, <laughs> my interview. Um, but yeah, guys. And give it a thumbs up. And give it a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll catch you tomorrow. So today I went a little bit fast, but hopefully, you know, if you can pause and watch it again, you'll be able to see it. But otherwise, we're going to keep going tomorrow with some mock-ups. We're going to make pin. We're going to make the mock-ups of the menus. And we're going to review a little bit the foil again and i'll bring some samples awesome well, thank you so much yeah. for hosting me thank you so much for teaching us how to use indesign for teaching us how to do the foil um we hope that you have a wonderful day howard is coming right up next doing xd so stick around for that thank yeah you follow this busy busy adobe <laughs> live day and keep keep busy while you stay at home thank you so much for joining us guys awesome guys thank you so much bye, bye. see you tomorrow see you.